What's going on, Doombots? Tony Skinjili here with the video I promised for my stream. This is the 15, it's actually 16 because I had a Graviton, uh, characters that if you work on, you will succeed in U7. That's it. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. This doesn't care about what success some people are having using arbitrary characters. Uh, these are 15 characters overall that you can cherry pick. You can work on five, six, seven, eight, and create multiple different versions of teams in order to succeed in U7. You know, one thing you'll notice is that there are no full teams because surprise, da da da, there are no full teams that work well in U7. So, uh, just to let you know, not all of these characters are required. This is just kind of leaning into what the core fights of U7 look like and where they go. Uh, starting off, we'll go with the Inhumans. Now, the Inhumans are Yo-Yo, Black Bolt, uh, and of course, Crystal. Crystal gives them sustainability as well as a lot of extra value by slowing the opponent opposing teams. Uh, getting a little bit extra energy from Yo-Yo is definitely beneficial. The downside, of course, being Yo-Yo's basic will not exclusively call Black Bolt. So you get a little bit less sustainability uh, when it comes to removing buffs, but you gain a lot more uh, base level healing in case something goes slightly wrong. So if you have these three characters relatively high, that's the core of a team. You would end up splashing two other characters in that team to kind of work it out. Uh, as Guardians, there's really only two you need for U7. Now, of course, People are going to say, well, I use this and this and this, and I use Sif and I use that. That's great and wonderful, but none of those are necessary. If you have a strong Hela and a strong Thor, going into U7, they're going to be uh, excess damage that works very well with some of the existing other comps. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily pair them with the Inhumans, even though it's like a perfect lineup, but you could. It's, it's possible to do that. Uh, probably not as sustained as you like, but just like the Inhumans, they do kind of sustain themselves with the presence of Greg. Uh, Thor is doing a lot of extra damage. Thor does have a targeted stun that can hit more than one character, uh, which is very relevant. And Hell, of course, is a debuff spread with Greg. So those two characters alone have been used to great success by many people in order to progress. Now, obviously, uh, you could use Hela just on her own without needing Thor. So just like you don't need Crystal and the Inhumans, if you just have investment in Hela, that will be okay. You can probably do pretty well with just her, but if you did have both, that's a core team. So if you are happening to work on your Asgardians, those two characters, which are the two that you should be working on to begin with anyway, will help you the most. Moving to the Symbiotes, duh, there's only three. Uh, Venom, again, is another character that's completely optional on this team. If you have Symbiote Spider-Man alone, he's phenomenal, plus Carnage, he gets better, as does Carnage. Uh, Venom does have a targeted uh, taunt removal on basic, as well as some debuffs, so pretty useful there. His debuff spread can be very relevant, and, uh, you know, his ability block is pretty important. So if you kind of combine this team with the Asgardians the way they are, uh, you have a lot of sustain, both the Symbiotes sustain themselves, as well as Greg sustain the Asgardians. You have the ability to spread debuffs and really control the fight. You have extra damage from Thor, but they're going to be taking most of the turns. So regardless of whether you use just Symbiote Spider-Man, Symbiote Spider-Man and Carnage, or the three of them together, you do have the core of the team, and these are in relative order of where I would not only invest in, but start using the characters. Yes, that does include in humans. I would bring Yo-Yo in before I even had Black Bolt. I would then add Black Bolt when I got him. Uh, you can use Black Bolt without Yo-Yo. You can use Yo-Yo without Black Bolt, whatever. Uh, Black Order, I've seen a lot of people use multiple versions of the team. I don't think it's necessary. I think the best use you get out of characters like Thanos in raids is the energy throw. So when you look at characters uh, like the Inhumans or like the Asgardians, Thanos throwing out energy to Black Bolt or to Thor or to Hela can be so much more meaningful than Thanos, you know, never having that ability when he switches over to a Black Order version of the character. Uh, and Maw is just ultimately a very good version of like Shuri and Minerva combined. He often defense up a lot. He has turn meter manipulation. He does have a big... Uh, heal that is, you know, undodgeable kind of, uh, at least 3% of it is, uh, as well as some damage. They work very well together. Uh, again, 
much like the Asgardians, you can choose one or both of the teams. It really depends on what you're trying to do. Thanos really only works better when he's feeding energy to characters. So you could probably throw together the Inhumans and the Black Order as an example of a team. They should sustain themselves very well. Uh, Maw works very well with Crystal to begin with. But the problem is you do lose Yo-Yo from that setup, so you'd need a fifth character. Uh, somebody to you know, bridge the gap, which we'll get into next when we talk about floaters. Uh, floaters are the characters that are just fundamentally good characters. Ultron is a fundamentally good character. Uh, in U7, he can be great. He is relatively slow, but that actually doesn't make too much of a difference with teams like the Symbiotes or with teams like the Inhumans, because his turn meter uh, and the ability for his, you know, bots to give speed up and offense up uh, is relevant and those characters those minions will end up dying a lot quicker than you think in some of the harder versions of u7 so in the early stages of u7 he does slow down the fight but in the larger and higher stages he actually speeds up the fight a little bit because those minions are dying all the time so you don't have to waste uh their turns really other than just the fact that they're going to use their uh special ability and move on uh shuri just all around one of the best raid healers in the game, offers deflex, offers uh, defense up, throws a little bit of energy out, big heal, heal blocking, very relevant character. Minerva uh, fell off a little bit, but if you have... The biggest value of Minerva is if you're killing characters. So the earlier in U7 you are, the more likely Minerva is going to be more valuable, and then the later you get into U7, you need some high impact, high damage dealing characters like a very strong Black Bolt, a very strong Thor, maybe even argumentatively like Ultron. Um, she kind of does the exact opposite of what the Symbiotes do. The Symbiotes get stronger as characters get weaker. She gets stronger as characters die, and she throws out those heals. So there's situations where you want to use her. For example, I would put her in for Yo-Yo if I was using the Black Bolt, Crystal, Maw, Thanos, Minerva comp. That would be a team I would use. And of course, Invisible Woman is just a phenomenal overall protector. She has very long cooldowns, but that's okay because in U7, you don't need to absolutely use the cooldowns the second they come up. They're more situational. Uh, she also has a pretty decent counterattack, but when she does do her flip, she makes characters like Thanos more survivable, Hela and Thor more survivable. She can flip the uh, negative effects like heal block on the symbiotes. So overall, she is an incredibly useful character, providing you know when to use her abilities and plan accordingly. Uh, and she's a great splash character as a fifth on a lot of teams. I added aim to this comp for a couple reasons. One, regardless of my best advice, people are still going really hard on their aim team, both early, mid, and late game. I don't understand why. It's not necessary. But if you do... I'd rather not tell you, well, you're screwed. I'd rather tell you there's something you could still do. In earlier U7s, U7 regular, dot one, maybe even dot two, uh, Scientist Supreme and Graviton work as a very good two-piece combo. They uh, were willing to debuff the opposing characters very well, so you can use them as characters two, uh, four and five on the Inhumans. You can also use them as the fourth and fifth symbiote uh, in order to get rid of heal blocks. Graviton is a great character with Scientist Supreme. He has an on-target stun, so with the symbiotes you'd have two on-target stuns that you could save for whenever you need them. They ultimately offer a lot of value. You lose a little bit because Graviton isn't necessarily very tanky, uh, and he is hard to invest in, but if you do have a high investment in your aim team, you could throw the aim together with, you know, the Inhumans, the symbiotes, or you could throw them together with uh, Ultron and, you know, Minerva and you know maybe one other random character on this pool and put it together now what you'll see here is i've made a couple of sample teams to show like what you can do the first is the team that i use in u7 pretty real reliably uh and it's you know symbiote spider-man carnage thanos maw and black bolt uh the placement is completely up to you depending on the actual node sometimes i want black bolt getting all the energy and sometimes if i think the node isn't that challenging or difficult uh i would have uh, Black Bolt split his energy with Maw so that Maw, you know, he has relatively long cooldowns. I want to make sure he's charging up rip decently. Uh, you don't have a res on this team, so this team uh, does have a lot of sustainability. As a matter of fact, Thanos can heal himself, Maw can heal everybody, the Symbiotes can heal 
themselves and Black Bolt is relatively tanky so he doesn't need it. However, this team doesn't run into too many issues. Thanos is usually taunting uh, and the symbiotes usually take a lot of extra turns. Uh, Black Bolt fills Venom's slot very well with his basic but also does a significantly better amount of damage uh, and Maw's ult obviously is turn control. Uh, sample Team 2 is a team you may have heard we use calls the Dontron. Uh, this kind of team comp is absolutely phenomenal. It takes advantage of a couple of key features of the game. For example, if Hela happens to die and you res her with Minerva, congratulations, you have two Gregs. Uh, every time Greg dies, Minerva goes faster, etc, etc, etc. Now, the problem with this team primarily is that you don't have a tank. You don't have any way to say, hey, hit me over here. Uh, and there's really no tank you could add. So you can add Shuri to the fight in order to make sure that you know, your team is defensed up relatively often uh, and your big damage dealer is Ultron. Or you can add a character like, just off the top, Yo-Yo. You can add Yo-Yo to the team and she will make everyone do less damage, which is fine because you have a, a pretty decent sustain comp with either Minerva or Shuri. You have a pretty decent setup uh, with your single target damage with Ultron. You have a ton of AoE damage between Thor and Hela. This is a team that will probably get you pretty far in U7 up to dot 3, I'd say. It would get you 30-60% without worrying too much about it. Uh, sample team number 3 was one of those teams I was talking about a little bit earlier. You notice I threw Ultron on there. And the reason I'm throwing Ultron on a lot of these teams is because there's a misconception that Ultron isn't good. He is good. He was slow. And now that the fights exist and we have a scaling you know, growth, Ultron is adequate at like best and he's still one of the best options you could bring in uh, Anytime you see Ultron and not symbiote spider-man, please feel free to throw symbiote spider-man in there He's in a very similar kind of vein. He sustains himself. He does pretty decent damage um, But symbiote spider-man really works better when he's got turn meter or else he's relatively slow Ultron is giving you more characters that do buff everybody crystal and maul work very well together Ultimately, you'd have two different force, three technical uh, sources of sustain, both Crystal's passive in case any of the humans go down, Maw's ultimate, and then uh, Ultron's uh, heal dot. You also notice that there's no other summons on this team, so you don't actually run the risk of losing slots to Greg by summoning characters, which is a problem you kind of run into in the second fight. But again, as you go into harder and harder fights, Everything dies quickly, so it doesn't actually matter. And then sample team number four is just kind of like, hey, what do I put with the best possible characters I have? This is a sustained team that kind of evaluates where everything goes. It's Symbiote Spider-Man, Hela, Yo-Yo, uh, Black Bolt, and Shuri. Shuri being one of the best healers to give everybody that deflect if things go down. Uh, Symbiote Spider-Man sustains himself, as does Hela somewhat with Greg. Uh, Yo-Yo both sustains Symbiote Spider-Man as well as gives your team a little bit extra survivability. Black Bolt is the damage dealer on the team. You have targeted stuns, you have control, you can spread defense down uh, with Hela's ultimate in order to uh, ult with Black Bolt if need be. You have a pretty decent uh, line of sustain. This is a, a slower team overall, but it's, it's using some of the best characters. Uh, and this is one of those examples I was saying of just using like one of the best overall kind of characters. Now you can replace any of these characters fundamentally with someone else who does what they do. Like, I don't have Black Bolt. Well, you can use Ultron on this team and it'll still be okay, you know? Uh, I don't have Yo-Yo. Well, then you can use a character like Invisible Woman uh, who will give them sustainability, just not as reliably, kind of. So these are the kind of examples I wanted to get through. And this is the, the entire point I wanted to make regarding the U7 uh, unlike U6, where you can technically build a couple of different teams, full teams, and go on, U7, as well as Dark Dimension, are really about key characters, and I think there's a lot of overlap in uh, some of these characters, as well as Dark Dimension 2, with obvious exceptions of characters like Phoenix, who you would never count as a raid character, because she's not a raid character, because she has to die uh, in order to do the most damage, and then when she does that, uh, you have to heal her. So characters that you have to spend raid heals on in order to succeed with are not raid characters. They're bad at raid. Uh, that said, you can always use characters to defeat a specific node. So feel free to use your like Magneto, Sinister, Phoenix team in order to take out the hardest node you can. 
uh, and that's a great option. Feel free to throw together different teams, but the, the idea around this is not only can you build a team, like you see here, samples, you could build multiple teams, and then you can end up having two different teams for U7 so that uh, your weaker one can clear through the earlier stages, and then you can move to your stronger one as you start fighting more. So these are the 15 plus Graviton characters that you can invest in in order to succeed in U7, at least based on the information that we have right now. And overall, the investment, my recommendation would be like, bring them to gear tier 13. You'll notice that Crystal, Thor, Venom, you know, Graviton, Scientist Supreme, these are characters you could literally never touch and still end up coming up with quite a bit of these teams. So you're in a pretty good spot even if you don't invest in them. But if you happen to have high red stars or if you happen to have invested in them, you got lucky with the Mega Orb pull, by all means, these are the teams that I do. So hopefully this helps. Comment below. Let me know uh, if any of these teams are the teams you're using or anything crazy. Any, any crazy comps using. I know plenty of people use Magneto. Uh, I know some people just kind of use... Uh, Corvus Grave and Proxima Midnight because of their deep, uh, their stun and their massive damage. You know, let me know what you're using in U7 and what difficulty you're using it in because I found success with all of these teams in U7 difficulty up to difficulty 3. So we'd have to move further uh, beyond difficulty 3, maybe to difficulty 4, which I don't do that often, so I couldn't necessarily test. Uh, where their value is. Anyway, have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scancilli, and I'll catch you later.